relations between Florence and Ravenna had been somewhat strained for, believe it or not, seven centuries. The reason? Because one of Florence's most illustrious native sons, Dante Alighieri, is buried in Ravenna instead of in his hometown. On their part, the citizens of Ravenna say, Look, brothers, Dante died in Ravenna. And besides, you, Florence, had exiled Dante and he had chosen not to return to the place that had treated him so badly. Dante was expelled from Florence as if for financial misconduct when he was in the administrative office, but in fact for political reasons. Dante spent many years wandering in different cities and countries and finally he settled in Ravenna at the invitation of the local duke. In Ravenna he spent the last three years of his life, and here he died on September 14, 1321, of malaria, which he contracted in Venice, where he was on a diplomatic mission for his duke. Dante was buried the next day. The body was placed in a very simple ancient Roman marble sarcophagus standing in a small portico uh, at the cloisters of the Church of San Francisco. The Franciscan friars were appointed custodians of his body. In 1483, Dante's sarcophagus was moved to, to the other side of the cloisters, and, and the ruler of the city, Bernardo Bembo, commissioned the sculpture Pietro Lombardo for a marble bas relief depicting. Dante's face, which can now be seen inside the tomb. The Dante's story after his death most closely resembles a medieval adventure novel. To begin with, in uh, 1329, that is eight years after Dante's death, Cardinal Bertrand de Puget classified Dante's book on monarchy as heretical and demanded that Dante's bone be burned at the stake. Somehow Dante's friend uh, managed to resist this demand. Florence, for its part, did not give up the desire to seize the remains of Dante. The first three attempts made in um, 1396, 1429, and 1476 were unsuccessful. Ravenna turned them down. But Florence decided to return Dante's body at any cost. The opportunity came after 200 years after Dante's death, when Giovanni di Lorenzo de' Medici became the Pope Leo X, and in October 1519, the Florentine Academy, which at that time included Michelangelo, petitioned the Pope to return the body.
The Pope sent a delegation to Ravenna to bring the Dante's bone to Florence. But <laughs> once in Ravenna, to its surprise, when the delegation opened the sarcophagus, it was empty. The Franciscan uh, friars removed Dante's remains by making a hole in the wall between their monastery and the sarcophagus and stashed the poet's body at some place in the cloisters, all without being spotted from the outside. They kept it hidden and practically forgotten for 158 years until in 1677 one of the friars identified the poet's bones and put them in a wooden chest uh, with the inscription in Latin, Dante's bones deposited here by me, brother Antonio Santi, 18th October 1677. Also, it is recorded that in 1692 the Dante's sarcophagus was repaired and that workers were supervised by armed guards to make sure that nobody would try any foolish things. More than a hundred years had to pass after that before the Cardinal Luigi Valenti Gonzaga commissioned the local architect Camilo Mariggia to build a mausoleum. The mausoleum was completed in 1781 and the original sarcophagus with the wooden chest with the Dante's remains inside and 15th century bas relief were transferred there. So that no one could be it in any doubt, it was inscribed in Latin Dante's Poeta. Sepulchrum, the tomb of Dante the poet. And the cardinal installed his personal coat of arms on the pediment. So, if you think that this is the end of the story, you are wrong. In 1810, Napoleon ordered the confiscation of monastic properties. Therefore, the friars were forced to leave. But first, they made sure to hide again the Dante's uh, chest to prevent it being looted. This time, they put it under what had been a doorway between the Basilica of San Francisco and the adjacent chapel. After the friars left, the casket lay forgotten for over 55 years, and uh, those who visited Dante's tomb actually visited an empty place. Only by chance some worker stumbled upon the casket when a renovation was underway at the Basilica of San Francisco for celebrating the sixth centennial of Dante's birth, and some young student who happened to be there read the Latin inscription on the chest and shoot it in amazement. Dante's bones are here, not in the tomb. 
it happened in 1865. Then the bones were reassembled and exhibited for two days in a specially created beautiful crystal case before they were returned to the mausoleum. Hundreds of people flocked to see them. Yet this is not the end of the story. At the end of 19th century, the idea arose among the Italian public that the existing mausoleum was too simple, too modest for such a great person as Dante, and a new, grandiose tomb should be erected more in line with his status. The commission was organized and the fundraising began. The commission asked uh, Giuseppe Verdi for a donation. Verdi refused. And this is what he said. Dante raised by and for himself a monument so great and so high that no one can reach it. Let's not lower it with display that place him on the same level as so many others, even the most mediocre. To that name I don't dare raise hymns. I bow my head and worship in silence. Now let's continue. In 1945, the fascist government discussed the transfer of Dante's remain to, uh, to the Valtellina Redoubt, uh, that is an alpine valley in which Mussolini's regime intended to give the last battle against the Allies. It was stated that uh, the greatest symbol of Italy must be present at the heroic end of fascism. Fortunately, this did not happen. Meanwhile, for fear of bombardment or pillage during the war, Dante's remains were again moved for safekeeping. Taken from the mausoleum in March 1944, the casket was buried uh, in the garden nearby and was kept there until December 1945, when, no longer in danger, it was returned to its resting place. And what about Florence? Since um, uh, 1829, a magnificent, empty cenotaph passionately awaits Dante's arrival at the Basilica of Santa Croce in Florence. And uh, Florence erected a wonderful monument in front of the Basilica. And to ensure that no one forgets its claim every year on the anniversary of Dante's death the city of Florence sent olive oil to burn perennially in the 17th century lamp that Florence 
had gifted to its rival city. The lamp is hanging in the mausoleum, which is located in the center of the Ravenna, in so-called the Dante's area or the Silence area, which houses, in addition to Dante's tomb, also the Franciscan cloisters and the Dante Museum. And now, that is the end of the story.